Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. So in this video, I would just like to correct a mistake that someone in the comment section pointed out. Thank you for pointing that out. I was a little careless with my uh, complex analysis at that point. So I wish to correct it. And you may find that that video will be deleted. The, the wrong one. So we have to basically find the, the Laplace transform of uh, natural log of t. So let me just write that down. Natural log of t for t greater than 0 and 0 for t less than 0 so that we don't confuse ourselves with a bilateral Laplace transform when it's not needed here. So say capital F which, which can be complex of a complex variable s is the Laplace transform of f of t. It is also the integral from 0 to infinity dt or maybe I should add the dt later e to the minus s t natural log of t dt okay I've done nothing fancy just plugged in the, the definition and now u is s times t so u is also complex because it is a product of s and t. t is real and uh, t is in, in this case greater than 0. So our du is s dt. Well, t belongs to 0 infinity. u will also belong to 0 infinity cross zero infinity because it is uh, complex but all of this has one big assumption in it the assumption that the real part of s is greater than zero because if it, if it were not then we would have to modify one of the one of these ranges uh, for for u of t which and then it would have to be negative to account for the realness of t and this assumption will really help us it will really it will really help us to converge nicely you can also make note that in the in the laplace transform integral itself natural log of t grows much less than the absolute value of the linear function which is much less than an exponential so it cannot really combat with an, an exponential decay because it itself is way less than an exponential so now with this substitution and some idea for the region of convergence you can you can you know just take my argument for it or see what happens later if we don't assume this so if it converges our assumption was true if it doesn't it was false so if we sub substitute this in our bounds are no longer from zero to infinity it's it's some it's some line on the complex plane du e to the minus u over s natural log of u over s I'm underlining to denote the complex nature of the variables. Now, if I use a slightly different color here, I would like to draw what this looks like on the complex U plane. So here's our imaginary axis. There's our real axis. Uh, and we we know that it has two start and end points so it has one start point that's at the origin the other end point is at uh, infinity comma plus i infinity which i can choose to write re or represent as r plus i r or I, i'm going to take the limit as r goes to infinity 
and the real path it's going to take it's going it can be anything because s is free s is a free variable as a free complex variable so this path can be can can take any shape so for example it can be uh it can be something like this it can be some some curve like this but the thing is there's no there's no there's no poles on the on the u plane between these two points the only pole for the integrand is probably at u equals zero but we're choosing to sort of not have that point we're gonna say, say call it like epsilon and epsilon is arbitrarily close to zero but because there's no poles we can deform any random path into a straight line by contour deformation and then i need to connect this back so i can connect it like this and then sort of go back here and now for the sake of uh, positive orientation and anti-clockwise arrow direction and then i will call this r this is epsilon or zero but epsilon is arbitrarily close to zero we can take the limit later so we should have something like this and this uh segment is c the sort of diagonal segment is the c we wanted okay now you can see that the segment c is or you, you can call it f of capital s f uh, capital f of s we have a minus of that going on here because it was increasing on 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 this interval it is going back down now see so if this plus the real segment so maybe i should call this one and this two so the real segment the imaginary segment which is two is zero because there's no uh, poles this is zero by koshi gursa now let's parameterize each individual segments so on one So on one we have um, u is just some real value, so call it x. We have integral from zero to r of um, e to the minus x over complex S natural log of x over complex S dx. And this is real, so you know we can really work with this. It's really nice. Let's just keep it as it is. Call it I one. Now for two, let me quickly choose a different color. So on two stuff is a little bit imaginary. U is R plus I Y, where we can vary Y. Um, D U is uh, I D Y. With that, we have I2 as integral from 0 to R, e to the minus R plus IY, divided by complex S natural log of R plus IY, divided by capital S IDY. That's fair. Now, what's what's the big what's the big deal here? Well, you see, if if we take the limit as r goes to infinity, so in the in the in the in the first case, that really does nothing. That just puts infinity on on top, which is fine. This is a totally workable form, and this is the real part. The real integral is what we're gonna work with later. Putting an infinity here, or taking the limit as, in, as r goes to infinity here. What that does is fine. You know, it, it puts infinity on the on the top of the integral. But notice that the exponential is is it going to decay the fastest, way faster than the natural log because of the above argument that we made here. So because of that, it, we don't care what really happens for the 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 phase part of it the 
the unit magnitude part of it because it's always going to be bounded. We don't care about the e to the minus i y part. We just care about the e to the minus r part because that's the part that's going to infinity. That's the part that's doing the growing and the decaying. So because of that, and you convince yourself, this goes to zero. And what are we left with? Well, we now are left with capital F of S is just the real integral, which we had here. So integral from zero to infinity, e to the minus uh, x, natural log of x over s, I have to divide by an s, dx. And this is extremely easy to work with because you can just split it up. 1 over complex s, maybe I should write that again. 1 over complex s, e to the minus x, natural log of x, dx minus integral e to the minus x natural log of s dx this just becomes well this is the digamma of one and that's the gamma of natural log of s times the gamma of one so we have a uh, minus euler mascheroni constant minus natural log of s because this gamma gamma of one is the zero factorial which is one and that is the laplace transform of natural log of t well zero is obviously going to be zero so if you want to write it in a piecewise form it's going to be this and then zero with the region of conversions the real part of S greater than zero. Of course, this was the answer. This was the assumption at the start. But um, another way of thinking about this, and I'm going to I'm going to go about this a little quick. Is uh, assuming 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 real part of S were less than zero. If we assume this, maybe we can come to a nice contradiction. Then sort of our um, our path, our weird path would be like this from like zero to like minus infinity plus i infinity so it would be something like that which we could deform naturally to be another straight line but then if we sort of try to uh, you know bring back the real part because we we want the zero to infinity real part back we want the same range we want a similar form because that's what's way easier to work with if we if we want that, we would have to sort of deform it in such a way that we like cycle back and then like fall down vertically on this path. But but coming to this side of the U plane, and remember this is the U plane. The entire thing is the U plane. Coming to this side of the U plane means we can the the, the real part of U is uh, also non-zero or, or less than zero. But the the point is and this is an important point is if u is s times t so real part of u is t times the real part of s so if the real part of s is less than zero then this entire thing is less than zero because t is in between zero and infinity as the way we defined it so it means the real part of u ha always has to be zero which means this this part of the the u plane this part of the u plane it it sort of it's not a valid play it's not a valid region it's not it's not plausible and you, we can't really bring our path that way because the the domain of integration itself won't be defined because we're integrating on du so that's that's a big contradiction which which you might sort of run into if you if you take this so this is not true that is true and of course it converges nicely to give us this answer which indeed is the laplace transform so thanks for watching this video thanks for correcting me keep doing that if i make some silly errors this was a really important point to bring up we trivialize this it seems simpler than it is sometimes
Thank you, Riyadh, for bringing that up. See you next time. Peace out.